Thank you. Before the court is Rodney Davis of cases 0639, case 13 case 21 or DS. In each of these matters, Mr. Davis is here today after failing to appear before this court on April 3rd, 2024. In the first case, bond is currently set at $2,209. This is the 11th bench warrant. In the second case, bond is currently $5,326. This is the fifth bench warrant. In the third case, bond is currently $1,481. This is the eighth bench warrant. Fourth case, bond is currently $2,865. This is the fourth bench warrant. Fifth case bond is currently $1,686. This is the 12th bench warrant. Sixth case bond is currently $6,991. This is the 12th bench warrant. And in the final case bond is currently $1,087. And this is the second bench warrant. He reports no employment. Last payment made on these accounts was in January of 2021. Front of the court recommends that reasonable bonds be set in these matters and they be scheduled for hearing on May 1st, 2024 at 8.45 a.m. before this court. Thank you. Mr. Davis, uh, you're before the court charged with civil contempt of court due to your failure to appear at a prior hearing on April 3rd, 2024 as a result of your failure to pay child support. The purpose of this hearing is to set a bond that would assure your tenants of the next hearing on May 1, 2024 at 8.45 a.m. You will get notice of that in writing. Are you able to post bonds, sir? No, sir, I'm not. Okay. Uh, with all the cases, I assumed you probably wouldn't be able to. Uh, sir, um, can, I, can I talk? You can. I, the only issue we're deciding today is bonds. So if you want to talk about okay. any individual case, uh, I yeah, have I didn't, the information no, on that. that. And it's, it's not today's hearing. That would be the hearing on uh, September or on May 1. Okay. I just wanted the court to know that I had no knowledge that I was supposed to be in court on the 3rd. That's all I was going to say. Well, likelihood in all those cases, they send the uh, notice to your last known address. And if yeah. you didn't change your address, they would have sent it wherever you said last time. So. Yeah. Well, I'm going to reduce your bonds in hopes that you could be released, but uh, I do know, yeah. okay, I'm going to set the bond in each case in the amount of $300. If you're able to post that, you'd be able to be released. Do you have any questions? Uh, no, sir. Okay, thank you. You're free to go. Have a good day. You too. Thank you. Anything else, Mr. Chapman? I did have some bench warrants, but I didn't get them re ready for this morning, so that's all okay. for the Okay, thanks. Yeah, good, good morning to uh, both of you. Good morning to you, Mr. Sackrider. Good morning. Uh, this is the time and place set for the uh, arraignment in this uh, particular matter from a violation of the personal protective order issued on January 23rd, 2025, for by uh, Judge Jose Johnson. Uh, Mr. Sackrider, as I read the uh, police report in this matter, I note that the officer confirmed that the PPO had not been served. Is that your understanding? Yes, it is. Okay. Well, as a result of the fact that uh, it was not served, uh, the court can't proceed with a violation because if you weren't served, you had no notice and therefore it was no violation. I do note that you had criminal charges from uh, other action in this particular case. So it would be the intent of the court Mr. Sackrider, to dismiss the PPO violation. Uh, I don't assume you have any opposition to that. Uh, no, no objection, Your Honor. Okay. The court will then uh, dismiss the uh, PPO violation. And uh, then uh, in this matter, then uh, Mr. Hansen, then you'll have to, uh, you'll have to take care of the other issues, but uh, at least as regard to this matter, you won't be uh, having to appear in this. So, okay. hey, thank you. You're free to go. Have a good day. All right, thank you. Nine thirty-two a.m. Court will note the appearance of Miss Sachs on behalf of plaintiff, Miss Savage on behalf of defendant. This matter is before the court on the plaintiff's motion for temporary custody, parenting time support, and temporary restraining order. Miss Sachs. 
Your Honor, we just ask that we adjourn this out for a week, uh, given that Attorney Savage just entered this case last Thursday, as well as uh, some dispute about whether or not defendant actually got uh, the exhibits that were mailed to him. So we would just ask that we meet at the same time next week. Okay. Uh, Ms. Savage, I don't assume you oppose uh, adjournment of one week? Definitely not, Your Honor. Okay. Okay. We will adjourn it a week and then uh, see you uh, next week. Uh, Monday at uh, 9.30. 2024 thank at you. 9.30. Okay, thank you. Good morning to both of you. Court will note the appearance of Ms. Sachs on behalf of the plaintiff. This matter is before the court on the plaintiff's motion to dismiss Ms. Sachs. Thank you, Your Honor. As pled, Ms. Reigns is asking that this motion be dismissed, or excuse me, that this case be dismissed um, without prejudice. Okay. Mr. Matthew, do you have any uh, response to the motion? Yes, I don't really see a point in dismissing. Um, we've already made it this far. We've wa we've used up the court's time, um, our own time. Everything's paid for, ready to go. It's already made it, from what I understand, to mediation. Um, I didn't have any objection to the divorce at all. It was just a division of property. So it just seems awful strange that all of a sudden we get to the division of property when we start talking about debts that all of a sudden uh, Miss Reigns wants to back off and cancel it all. Okay. Um, Let me tell you, if somebody files an action, they have a right to cancel it if they wish. Uh, you filed an answer in this case, but you didn't file a counter complaint. If you had filed a counter complaint, the court would not dismiss the action. Uh, I guess I'll ask, is it your intent to file a counter complaint? Yes. Okay. Your Honor, if I may. Yes, go ahead. At this point, no party actually lives within this jurisdiction. And so I don't believe that it is in the best interest of this case to proceed in this county, especially when the plaintiff is the only party who has filed a complaint and is asked for it to be dismissed. Well, it may not be in the best interest, but the court does have jurisdiction pursuant to the filing, and if they move, uh, there's actions that they can take for transfer. But again, the court did properly have uh, jurisdiction in this case. Uh, Mr. Marathia, what I'll do is I will uh, put this matter over for a week. And uh, what I'll do is if you wish to file a counter complaint, you can do so within that week, and then the court will not dismiss the action. If you don't file a counter complaint, the court will dismiss the action, okay? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. You're free to go. Have a good day. Yes, you too. At 9.57 a.m. Court will note the appearance of Ms. Nickerson on behalf of the plaintiff, defendant at Perry and Pro Per. This matter is before the court on the plaintiff's motion for temporary custody, parenting time, and support. Ms. Nickerson. Your Honor, yes, the parties have two sons, a 15-year-old and a 12-year-old. They have an older child together, but um, he is 23, so not addressed in the motion. And my client is still asking the court for an order for joint legal custody with her to have sole physical custody. For parenting time, Mr. Hudson has indicated quite recently that he may be looking to switch jobs, but for now, he is working 4 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Clemens here in Coldwater, and he has rotating days off from work. He does have a schedule that he has provided to my client that outlines his schedule for this year, for 2024. Under that schedule, he has one full weekend off each month, and we are asking the court to order that he be allowed to have parenting time during that full weekend from Friday at 6 until Sunday at 6. In his schedule, there is also um, often a second weekend that's not a full weekend. And my client does not take objection to an order entering that would have an additional weekend of each month that he could have parenting time from Saturday when he gets off from work until Sunday at 6 p.m. She just asks that Mr. Hudson give her um, for sure ahead of time which weekend he intends to use if he has a couple weekends that are partial weekends. We are asking for no parenting time during the week. 
It is difficult for the kids because they are active in sports schedules to be able to do the parenting time at dad's. Dad doesn't have bedrooms for them. There is a quite serious concern about fathers drinking. And I do recognize that this order does still provide for him to have parenting time during the weekend. We would ask for an order that he not be allowed to drink during that parenting time. There is some concern that we may have to ask the court at some point about evaluations, but we are hoping that with a court order and limited time that dad can refrain from drinking when the kids are in his care. And we are asking for child support to or, to enter as I provided in the calculation. And if dad disagrees with that income, I'd ask for an order that he provide me with proof of income. I went off from the information that we know. And my client is further asking that during dad's parenting time that he be required to transport the children to their sporting events if he cannot, to provide my client with reasonable notice, and then she can ensure that they are taken to those events. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Hudson, what's uh, your response to the motion? My response to the motion is that I would like to also be able to have the boys during the week sometimes when I'm on my five days off. And as far as the drinking goes, it's being highly over-exaggerated. And I function very well with my kids and do a lot of activities with them. And as far as drinking while I have the kids, I, I won't drink when I have the kids. And as soon as I got this letter last week, I've quit drinking just so that I don't jeopardize my time with my kids. Okay. Well, that's good, sir. What the, court will, what the court will do, will you have anything else, sir? Uh, I, not at this time, no. Okay. The court will uh, order that the parties would have joint legal custody. Court will provide the plaintiff with physical custody. Court will allow parenting time as stated that you would have parenting time the one weekend per month that you have a full weekend off, sir. And then in the second weekend, whatever weekend that would be, that you would notify the plaintiff, you know, at least 48 hours ahead of time when you're going to take them on that second weekend. And uh, the court would order Ms. Nickerson, as he stated, when he has five days off that he would have the child the children during during the week, the court would give him a midweek parenting time when he does have his five days off. That way he's off, he's able to have the kids, et cetera, as well as alternating holidays. Uh, court would set support pursuant to the child support formula and guidelines in this matter. Sir, if you contest the uh, amount uh, that Ms. Nickerson has put down for the uh, for the your income, she stated that you make eight hundred dollars a week. If you dispute that, you'll need to provide her with proof of income uh, within seven days of today's date. The court would further order that there would be no alcohol consumption during the time that the children are in Mr. Nickerson's, excuse me, Mr. Uh, Hudson's care. Ms. Nickerson, did you get all that? I did, Your Honor. On the second weekend, would I be including the language that his second weekend would be from when he gets off from work on Saturday till Sunday at 6 p.m.? Mr. Hudson, did that work if uh, when you get off on Saturday through Sunday at 6? Yes, that okay. sounds reasonable. Okay. We will put that in the, the order. So it'll be any that second weekend is when you get off work until Sunday at 6 o'clock p.m. Ms. Nickerson, you can prepare the order and submit under seven-day notice. I will, Your Honor, but I have two other questions. The, yes. When he has the five days off, you had indicated he would have a midweek. And what would the time be for the midweek parenting time? <laughs> I would state at that time from after school until 8 o'clock p.m. 
And then will the court enter an order that during dad's weekend parenting time that he would ensure the children would still be able to attend their extracurricular events? I will not. The parenting time is uh, available to the parent and uh, they can determine what they want to do with the parenting time. All right. I will prepare that order. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. You're free to go. Have a good day. You as well. Court will note the appearance of Mr. Reiser on behalf of the plaintiff. This matter is before the court on the plaintiff's motion in limine. Uh, Mr. Reiser. Good morning, Your Honor. Mutu Verapin, P86437, on behalf of uh, plaintiff Sarah Haley. Um, just for caption correction, uh, my client's name is Sarah Jordan. I understand that the case is captioned as Haley v. Haley. Has the court had an opportunity to review plaintiff's uh, motion and eliminate and brief and support? I have, and I've reviewed uh, the uh, answers to the request to admit as well. Okay, Your Honor. I would just rely on uh, my motion eliminate the brief and support and the answers as well, and I'd save time for response. Thank okay, you. thank you. Uh, Mr. Haley, is there anything you'd like to say in this matter? You're, you're muted, sir. You have to unmute. I was unable to hear the first part. I'm sorry about that, Your Honor. I was trying to figure out how to turn the sound on. Okay. Well, they're just stated they're going to rely upon their motion. So is there any response you have to the motion? Um, I asked that the motion not be admitted due to their own contradictions, too. I answered everything as honest as I could, but I didn't know that there was a certain way to answer these. I'd be trying to in everything. Okay. Any response now, Mr. Reiser? Yeah, briefly, Your Honor. Um. You know, this court has advised defendant prior uh, to this motion being brought when discovery was due that he could retain counsel. He's chosen not to retain counsel. Um, just because he chooses not to retain counsel doesn't allow him to ignore the law or the supporting case law. The statute's very clear on how these are supposed to be answered. Um, it's our sincere belief that they weren't answered properly. Some of them go to full admissions. Others are contradictory. Others uh, don't even answer the question or aren't relevant to the question. For those reasons, we're just going to ask that uh, plaintiff's motion, uh, plaintiff's request to admit be deemed admitted. Okay. Thank you. Well, in this matter, the court did uh, review the answers as attached to the, the motion. The court will note that uh, Michigan Court Rule 2.312 parens B parens 2 states that the party must specifically deny the matter or state in detail the reason why the answering party could not truthfully admit or deny it uh, and has other qualifications as well. When I looked at this and I looked at the answers, Mr. Haley did deny the answers. He didn't go into an explanation, but under the court rule, he's not required to unless he's making an objection. So the court will deem his uh, answers as appropriate, and the court will deny the motion. Mr. Haley, you're going to have to prepare an order denying motion and submit it under seven-day notice of entry, okay? All righty. Um, is there, I'm going to need help doing that. Is there, and I don't, I've been trying to find an attorney. Is there a way I could come down there and get help from like the clerk or something for that? Nope. Nope. The, uh, the, Clerks can't give you any legal advice, and there's nobody uh, that can give you the legal advice. What you might do is you might want to look it up online and find out, just get what a order denying motion looks like, and then you could prepare one appropriately, making sure that it's your caption in your case. And what you're doing is you're simply denying, the court has denied the motion in limine, and that's what you would put in your order, Okay. All righty. I appreciate it, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. There's, have a good day. Yes. There's one last thing, Your Honor. Uh, plaintiff's motion to show cause is up tomorrow. Tomorrow's the evidentiary hearing. I did speak with um, one of the clerks earlier on this. My understanding is that Mr. Haley isn't receiving house counsel for the show cause. I'm not sure if that's how this court likes to do it. Uh, my only concern is that 
uh, there may be some sort of due process or appellate issue as related to plaintiff's motion to show cause tomorrow. Well, the court's, the court's not dealing with that today. That, that's tomorrow. The court will deal with that uh, that issue tomorrow. Understood. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 24 at 10, 11 a.m. Court will note the appearance of Mr. Umloff on behalf of plaintiff, Ms. McKenzie on behalf of defendant. Uh, the matter is before the court on two uh, matters, the, the defendant's objection and motion to rescind the ex parte order for return of child or children and defendant's objection to the ex parte mutual restraint order. Ms. McKenzie. Thank you, Your Honor. I'm asking the court to rescind uh, both orders, but I'll take up the uh, ex parte order regarding the, the children first. The... Um, matter was not served before the children were removed from the state of Arizona. So the uh, the mother believed that the children were in imminent danger and did leave and go to the state of Arizona. Uh, she has, the older child, the 14 year old uh, has got, uh, has had issues relating to her uh, schooling and her home life. And uh, Mrs. Yeomans had to make a tough decision of leaving the state for the protection of both girls, most especially her, uh, the party's older daughter. And the older daughter has had issues with cutting herself and threatening suicide based on the conditions at home caused by her father's uh, rage and screaming at her and criticizing of her. And this is beyond the ordinary uh, type of criticism where uh, a parent might get on their child's back or the, the child might get on the parent's nerves. But she got no relief at all. Um, she's being bullied. The older child, 14 year old is being bullied at school. Uh, she came, came home, uh, would come home and would be bullied by the father uh, also, not completely lacking, the father completely lacking an understanding of what she was going through. But this is a young lady who's had some uh, counseling, some psychiatric uh, help. Uh, she's on medication for anxiety and for ADHD. Um, and she would get no relief between the abuse that she was getting at school and those reasons are set forth in my motion the abuse that she was getting at school and she would come home and her father would be just on her back and with a complete lack of understanding of uh, what that abuse, what that bullying, what the death threat meant to uh, the child. And Mrs. Yeomans was completely dissatisfied with the action that the school district took regarding the death threat against her daughter and in regard to a death threat against another child, I think I have one word to say that is very significant here in Michigan, and that word is Oxford. So Mrs. Yeomans was not getting any uh, help from her husband regarding these issues with the older daughter. The younger daughter was adversely affected also by the father's continual criticism and shouting and screaming and just being out of control and mean to both girls. So Mrs. as you see in the affidavit and support, Your Honor, uh, Mrs. Yeomans did go to the state of Arizona. She had uh, secured a position there as a caregiver for a disabled veteran. She has a driver's license, voter's registration, uh, has a CDL uh, license. She is a, it has experience locally here in Michigan as a bus driver. So we're asking that the court um, in, in particular the lack of jurisdiction of the court prior to the action taken by the Arizona authorities. Arizona authorities picked up the girls in the state of Arizona pursuant to this court's um, March 28th, 2024 order. The girls were actually picked up on April 9th of 2024. And Mrs. Yeoman still had not been served by April 9th with the orders. Uh, the court uh, probably noted in the uh, affidavit and the and the motion motion objection that uh, a police officer in Arizona 
showed Mrs. Yeomans the ex parte order regarding the children, uh, but did not serve her with anything at all. He gave her an opportunity to uh, photograph the uh, order, and that was it. She had no um, supporting pleadings, no motion, no complaint for divorce, nothing. Uh, yet her children were being taken away on April 9th, 2024. So we're asking that the court rescind for the lack of service, the lack of compliance with the court rule, that being 3.207B2. Um, and 3.207B3. Uh, According to 3.207B3, an ex parte order is effective upon entry and enforceable upon service. So Mrs. Yeomans never got served, yet the Arizona authorities uh, tried to enforce this, in fact, did enforce them and remove the children from the safe environment in the state of Arizona to bring them back here, to send them back here to Michigan. So we're asking that the court rescind the March 28th ex parte order for the return of the children. We ask that the motion uh, underlying that ex parte order uh, be dismissed. Place the children in the mother's care immediately, temporarily and permanently. Grant the, the uh, father supervised parenting time and attend him to re re uh, require him to attend counseling. We're asking that uh, in the alternative, that this matter be sent for an evidentiary hearing, including uh, a date for your honor to interview the children as soon as possible. And we're asking for uh, $600 in relation to attorney fees and costs with regard to this single motion. With regard to, does court want to rule on this or would the court prefer that I go forward? You can go forward then, Mr. Elmoff can address both matters. Thank you, your honor. We're asking that the court uh, uh, rescind the March 27th, 2024 ex parte mutual restraining order uh, for the reasons of service, um, lack of service under 3.207, uh, parent B and parent 2. And as a practical matter, you're at, we'd also like attorney fees of uh, uh, $200 with regard to this motion. We're asking that the uh, plaintiff husband be required to to return the $3,820 that he removed from uh, the party's joint uh, account, which was used solely by the defendant mother. Um, and he removed that money two days after your honor entered the mutual restraining order, the ex parte mutual restraining order that he wanted. So he gets a mutual restraining order, and then he violates it two days later. But the, the issue here, besides that return of the money, is that the uh, matter was never served, as is required by an ex parte order, which, of course, is extraordinary relief. So we're asking for a total of $800 in attorney fees for both matters and uh, the relief that I've outlined uh, today. Thank you, Reiner. Okay, thank you. Mr. Amla, for your reply. I have reviewed and saw your answer, Mr. Umloff, and read all that. I would note, and I would for the parties note that uh, when this matter came up, uh, I did get a call from a judge in Arizona. I spoke to the judge in Arizona, and the judge in Arizona was deferring to Michigan in this particular regard and agreed to enforce the order in Arizona. Thank you, Your Honor. That, if I may comment on that, that's I thought that that had occurred based on, on one of the documents that we see. However, that conversation between Your Honor and the Arizona judge does not mitigate or, or um, do away with the lack of service uh, issue under the Michigan court rules. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, I didn't meant to uh, insinuate that. I just informing the parties that uh, the court did converse with the judge in Arizona. Correct. And uh, to let you know, obviously, the lack of service does not invalidate the order. It simply 
uh, eliminates any possibility of enforcement until such time as service, but it does not invalidate the order. Mr. Omloff, you can proceed. Your Honor, firstly, I would note that uh, Mr. Humans has a strong and loving bond with both of his children. We deny any allegations of abuse of the children or indeed um, the defendant. They're simply falsehoods um, to establish a pretext for the defendant to move to Arizona to get back together with her ex-husband, as I noted in my response. The defendant abruptly left with the children on March 23rd of 2024 with no warning to head to Arizona. This case was filed. March 27th of 2024. I would submit that the UCCJEA controls here due to the children, due to the, there being children. And jurisdiction is the place where a child lived with a parent for at least six consecutive months immediately before commencement of a custody proceeding under MCL 722-1102-G. At that point, at the time of filing, the children had been in Arizona for approximately four days depending on uh, flight schedules. It may have been slightly less. Nothing in defendant's motion points to any Arizona law or Michigan law that somehow gives Arizona jurisdiction over the children. So I would submit that the court here in Calhoun County has jurisdiction over the children um, and nothing in defendant's uh, objection constitutes an emergency that would justify uprooting the children and taking them to Arizona where they have not lived before. I'm going to butcher this name, but I have spoken with him, Deputy Habits Ruther of the Cochise County Sheriff's Office in Arizona, handed both the Calhoun County Circuit Court order and the Superior Court of Arizona order adopting Calhoun County's order to the defendant and allowed her to photograph it before taking them back. I would submit that that does constitute proper service, and even if it does not, um, Deputy Draper with the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office served the defendant with all pleadings, motions, and orders. On April 15th, 2024, we received the proof of service today, and my assistant, Sarah Hayes, electronically filed it by email with this court. Even if you're on a rules that the previous order um, was not enforceable, at the time that the children left Arizona, it is certainly enforceable now, and it is in the best interests of the children. My client does not dispute that the eldest daughter is dealing with bullying and that it is serious. And both to their credit, the defendant, my client, Mr. Humans, and the eldest daughter have discussed the possibility of transferring schools. The plaintiff, my client, expressed some concerns that transferring schools would disqualify the children from participating in the Legacy Scholars Program at the current school district which in essence allows a free associate's degree from Kellogg Community College uh, to children that have been in that school district and go to high school and graduate high school there, given the cost, the significant cost of college and university education at this point in time, uh, that is certainly a legitimate concern. Regardless, my client uh, does acknowledge that potentially transferring schools may be a good thing and has discussed it since Lyra's return with her. However, that does not justify simply moving the children across the country to Arizona, again, a state they have limited, if any, ties to. Um, my client has made clear to his daughter that he loves her regardless of her sexuality and has never bullied her uh, in any way and specifically has not bullied her over um, the fact that she is um, questioning her own sexuality. As it relates to the ex parte order, after after the defendant left, she had been in charge of bill payment within the marriage. But after the defendant left, my client noted that she had not paid the gas, electric, or internet bills, canceled his car insurance, and shut off his cell phone. He immediately entered the, used money out of the joint account because that was the only account he had access to other than the account that was used to pay the mortgage, and he did not want to be left unable to pay the mortgage on the marital home. That is a joint account that both parties have used during the marriage, and he used that money to pay for his bills to ensure that things like his gas would not be shut off. The ex parte order that we have submitted to the court does contain a provision allowing for such payments. Um, he also used some of that money to go to Arizona and get his children back in accordance with the court's order. Since Lyra has returned 
Since both children have returned, my client has continued their mental health treatment at Summit Point and has, a, in fact, scheduled a counseling appointment for Lyra on the 24th of this month. Since the children have returned to the state of Michigan, their mother is constantly putting them in the middle by bad mouthing their father and um, instructing them to delete messages uh, between her and the children in an effort to continue to try and turn them against their father. It is not in the best interest of these children to, to be taken out of state and go back and go to Arizona and further the ex parte motion, which my client has the ex parte order for uh, maintaining the status quo is an order my client has continued to follow, all of which were served on April 15th on the defendant. And for that reason, we would ask that this mo that the two objections be denied. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Anything else, uh, Ms. McKenzie? Just that I didn't I did not hear anything about the uh, a deputy physically handing any documents to my client that is news to me and it was not pled. I'm not aware that uh, I wasn't aware until a moment ago that, uh, that Lyra has an appointment at summit point. Um, uh, so I stand, I stand on our argument that the children were found in Arizona. It was an emergency matter, uh, in terms of the mental, mental and physical health of especially the older daughter because of the self harm issue. And I'm asking the court to rescind uh, both orders. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Well, in these particular matters, the parties cannot, uh, I guess you say, self-impose an emergency. It's up to the court to determine whether an emergency exists. Uh, I'm not convinced at this point, based upon the pleadings or the arguments or anything else, that uh, that, that emergency would exist. And clearly, when I spoke to the uh, judge in Arizona, uh, we we determined that uh, that again the home state for the children is Michigan, and that's why the judge in Arizona did sign that order deferring to the uh, Michigan order. There are clearly uh, many issues and allegations by both parties in this uh, particular matter, which would require an evidentiary hearing. Uh, the court will not change its orders until such time as we have an evidentiary hearing and there should be a basis to do so. So those orders will remain in this matter and uh, the court will not award any attorney fees at this time. Uh, Mr. Umloff, you can prepare the order, deny the uh, motions and objections, and then we will proceed further in this case. Your Honor, may the order, should the order also say that an evidentiary hearing will be set by the court? We'll, we'll set an evidentiary hearing. Yes, that's fine. And uh, so we'll we'll be in touch with uh, we'll be in touch with you to see when when we'd be able to get that set up. Thank you, Reiner. OK, uh, thank you. Tanya thank you, and the other defendants, attorney Hilderly for plaintiff and attorney King for defendants. OK, good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, this is the uh, time and place set for a status conference in this matter. So I'll go to Mr. Hilderly first and uh, bring me up to speed. What's happening in the case or what isn't happening? Can <laughs> I get on top of it? No, uh, you're good. Well, it, Your Honor, this is a fairly quick uh, regarding attorney fees. Um, the parties have engaged in some discussions uh, in attempts to resolve the matter. We haven't gotten there um, yet. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so really that's where we're at. Um, it's it's not a complicated case um, and we have been trying to work it out. Okay. Have you, uh, I'll just check, have you uh, come up with or agreed upon a mediator and set a date for that or or what's happening in that regard? We have not, not agreed upon a mediator yet or set a date. Okay, Mr. King, uh, what, what are, what are your, uh, what's your position? Well, I'm not sure that I have a position at this time. Uh, there is a very good chance I'll be withdrawing either sometime this week. I, I don't believe my client has the money to pay me. And uh, as, as much as I like them, I, I just can't do it for free. Um, however, if for some reason they were able to come up with the money today, this is their deadline, uh, then I would be interested in mediation if, if, if plaintiff counsel wanted to do that. That would be fine with me. Okay. Well, I'll leave it up to you, Mr. Hilderley, as, uh, again, depending on what's going to happen with uh, Mr. King and whether he withdraws or doesn't withdraw, the matter uh, 
court will want the matter to go to mediation. So you might want to come up with a, a mediator that you'd recommend. And if you can't get uh, Mr. King to agree, maybe you can get the uh, defendant to agree or defendants to agree as to a mediator so we can get that matter moving forward. Okay, Your Honor, I will await uh, Mr. King's uh, decision on, on what he's going to do and then either contact him or the defendants to try to set up mediation. Okay, thank you. Mr. King, uh, notify Mr. Hilderly if, uh, if you are in fact withdrawing and then, uh, then he can proceed on what he needs to do with regard to mediation. Okay, and then if, if I uh, stay involved and we agree to a mediator, should we just let the court know? Yes, let us, let us know right away because if we don't get, if we don't hear from like you within, let's say, two weeks, then we'll send it to the mediation clerk and they'll randomly assign a mediator and it may not be someone that you would prefer to have. So, fair enough. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, thank you. I'll let you go. Have a good afternoon. Thank you, Your Honor. Appreciate for plaintiff and attorneys going for defendant. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. I'll go to Mr. Applebaum first. Mr. Applebaum, uh, this is the time and place after the status conference. Uh, bring the court up to speed. What's happening in the case or not happening? Sure. Um, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> the court... Uh, previously, the plaintiff filed a motion for an injunction uh, to toll the redemption period. Um, this case arises from a sheriff sale. The court, um, um, in the court's ruling, uh, the court extended the redemption period 30 days, and the defendants would have to provide um, some sort of an accounting as to the amounts that were paid out, uh, distribution regarding related to the loan. Um, the defendant did timely provide that, um, and the court indicated in the motion in, in the ruling that if there are further discrepancies that the plaintiff could renew the motion. Um, we did find that there were further discrepancies, so we renewed the motion for an injunction. That's scheduled to be heard on May 6th. Um, <clears throat> um, and uh, and uh, we, the, the plaintiff provided the uh, uh, expert uh, disclosure pursuant to the court's scheduling order. Uh, I know that the defendant has some time to file theirs. Um, so that, uh, initial disclosures were also submitted. I don't recall if I received initial disclosures yet from the defendants, but, but I'm not sure if they're due yet. Um, I have to check the data dates on that. Um, and that is the, the status. So we should be back here in the next couple of weeks. Okay. Mr. Sigari, uh, what's, what's your thoughts? Well, <laughs> I, have, I have several, your honor. Okay. Uh, I know the timing may have been off. Uh, I The only way I knew about the status conference was because I looked the court's docket up to see if something was coming up. Uh, I have I never received notice of the status conference. In addition, I have no knowledge of this motion that's been renewed that's up for May 6th. Uh, so there's something falling through the cracks somewhere. Um, I'm not sure where, but well, we will check our file to see uh, why you would not have gotten notice. But uh, as to the plaintiff, I have no idea, and uh, I can't speak to that. Oh, if I could just add, I, I mailed it last week. It just may not have come in the mail yet, uh, to be honest. It, it, if you haven't gotten it, I can email you a copy as well. Um, but but it was mailed last week. But the mailing can be slow sometimes. I don't know. Okay. I don't know why you wouldn't have received it from us. We usually send it out well enough time to, to get that. Right, and, that, and that's not a problem. Yeah, when, we found the, the, when the case was filed initially and we don't have a return of service yet, we have everything sent to the plaintiff's counsel and then that attorney has to get a copy of the initial paperwork to the other uh, okay. parties. That may have been the, uh, the glitch at this point is that Apparently, when the, before there's a, a defendant represented or uh, served, then we send everything to the plaintiff's attorney, and they're supposed to forward it on, and maybe that didn't happen. So, well, in any event, we're we're here today, and uh, so I guess at this point we're going to await uh, that uh, May sixth date when we uh, have to address that motion, and. Uh, I guess the only thing I would ask is that maybe the two of you converse, and if it goes further, that that you come up with a name of a mediator that uh, you might want to use in this matter. 
and uh, maybe get a mediation date set up because Again, what happens if we don't have that, then our mediation clerk will just randomly assign a mediator and it may not be someone that uh, you you want to mediate the case. So this way uh, you have some input as to who the mediator will be and uh, and the timing of the mediation as well. If you think that's if you think it's necessary. Or it would be productive, let's say. I, I understand. I'm not sure if there's a whole lot to mediate and or facilitate, but well, and that, that that was my thought too. I just didn't I didn't know. I'll leave it up to the two of you. If, if not, we'll address what we can on the sixth, and uh, if that takes care of it, fine. If it doesn't, then uh, then we can talk about uh, maybe mediating at that time. Okay. Sounds okay. Good. Okay. Well, we'll let you go today then and uh, see you back on May 6th and uh, we can proceed then. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Are you like Tom Brady here? I, I heard that you had retired and now seeing you back. I, I don't know. How many times are you going to retire before you're actually gone? Well, you know, I've only been retired for a little, a month and a half. My wife kind of asked the same question, actually, Your Honor, oh, okay. about that. And I think she would like me to unretire. Ah, okay. 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 But I was just surprised to see you is all. Well, I, I'm, I'm helping out um, when I can. This is actually a case that I, I have some familiarity with. Although Barbara signed the pleadings, I, I handled the case up until the moment the, uh, the lawsuit was filed. And then she had a conflict today. She's in another court, and she asked if I could step in and do the Zoom call okay. with you. And I said, absolutely. Okay. Well, tell me what, what's happening. Uh, oh, we saw that you did have service back on uh, April 2nd. Uh, That's correct. So, have you? Well, I can tell you what. You just have a couple days, maybe a day or so before you get. Uh, the yeah, time I'm running. Yeah, tomorrow is the last day to file an answer. Um, we have the only thing I can tell you that we've heard, and we have attempted directly to contact. Uh, I'm trying to remember the resident agent, Ron Holcomb, the resident agent, uh, about three weeks ago, just before the uh, the lawsuit was served. Uh, he made a payment, a partial payment of $2,000 directly to our client. And we told our client um, to, uh, you know, to make do a couple things. One, tell him to send the money to us from now on. And two, if you hear anything further from him, let us know. We were going to try to contact Mr. Holcomb directly. And we did. Um, the secretary at our office uh, has attempted contact, but has not heard back from him or anybody there. So, at the moment, I, I don't really think it's going to be a disputed case. It's just a matter of how we're going to collect it. I know that they're in business, that they continue to, to operate, and uh, it's just a matter of, of how it's going to get paid. So right now, I guess we're waiting for the uh, deadline to expire on the uh, the answering of a complaint. We've heard nothing directly from, uh, from Marshall Metal Products or anybody re who might represent them. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if we do, we will deal with it at that point. But if uh, if we don't hear anything, we would ask that the court allow us to submit a default default judgment for entry. That would be fine if you don't uh, if you don't hear anything. If you do get an answer, the only thing I would ask at this point is maybe uh, you attempt to arrive at and agree upon maybe a mediator that could uh, could hear the matter. And uh, that way we would expedite it. We wouldn't lose some time having to get you back in for another status and only at that point tell the same thing as, oh, let's get a mediator involved, et cetera. So. Yeah, that, and that makes sense. We would certainly uh, uh, do do it that way if we can't work things out directly ourselves. Um, and I think we probably would. I think our client is is pretty realistic about uh, trying to get paid and, and would entertain a payment plan uh, as long okay. as it's realistic and, and okay. is su a sufficient amount. Well, keep us posted so we know what's happening. If obviously they don't respond and you do a default, then, uh, then we don't need to obviously be concerned with mediation. But if they do answer... Uh, you'll want to maybe contact them and, again, try to come up with some agreement as to, again, as you say, the payment plan or alternatively, if there is a dispute, then maybe get them to agree upon a mediator so we can get a mediator set up and try to expedite moving the matter along. Very good. Uh, we'll keep you posted, Your Honor. If we okay. don't hear anything from the defendant, we'll submit a default default judgment and Obviously, if there's some sort of agreement, even a post-judgment agreement of some sort that is reduced to a writing that gets filed with the court, we'll let you know that as well. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Good to see you again, and uh, you have a good day. 
Thank you. Same to you, Your Honor. Take care. All right.